to the second quarter of this year. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I have a Father, Almighty Father. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I have a Father, hallelujah. I have a Father, hallelujah. Almighty Father. kings and lord of lords, the father of all fathers, the almighty, the all-sufficient, the all-knowing God. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all adoration. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for bringing us into the second quarter of this year. Thank you for all you did in the first quarter. And my Father, my God, today, as we gather before you, give us a very special divine encounter. This month of April, in particular, as we are having a very special gathering for children, we pray that you will bless our families mightily. That we will bless our families so mightily that our children will never lack. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, let someone shout hallelujah. <laughs> and I want you to prophesy to one or two people and tell them, my children will never beg. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Proverbs 13, verse 22. A good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. A good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children. I mean, the plan of God for a good man is to prosper so mightily that even his grandchildren will still be enjoying part of the prosperity of the grandpa. And that's why I'm praying for someone here today. During your own lifetime, poverty will be forgotten in your family. Yeah. Abraham was greatly blessed. According to Genesis chapter 24, verses 34, and 35, Genesis 24, 34 to 35. But Isaac was very greatly blessed. According to Genesis 26, from verse 12 to 14, Genesis 26, 12 to 14, 
Abraham was great, but Isaac was very great. And Jacob was exceedingly great. Genesis chapter 30, from verse 41 to 43. Genesis 30, 41 to 43. The blessing began with Abraham. Abraham was greatly blessed. The blessing increased by the time he got to Isaac. Isaac was very greatly blessed. He had stores of servants. He was storing servants like people store goods. And by the time we got to Jacob, the Bible said the man became exceedingly great. That's a very powerful word, exceeding, not just ordinary now. But you go down the lineage of Abraham, you find a blessing continued, greatness continued. By the time we got to Joseph, great grandson, he was already the controller of the wealth of the whole nation. I pray for somebody here today. Greatness will begin with you. Your children will be greater than you. Your grandchildren will be greater than your children. And greatness will continue in your family. What happened? Abraham had a divine touch. You know our topic this month is the divine touch. In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, God called Abraham out of the congregation of idol worshippers and chose him for himself and told him not only will I bless you, not only will I make your name great, through you, the whole nation, the whole world will be blessed. And then God never does anything by accident. God knows the end from the beginning. He knew something special about Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, from verse 17 to 19. Genesis 18, 17 to 19. He said, I know him, that he will teach his children to do the will of God. I know him. God knows the end from the beginning. Can God say concerning you today that I know you? That you would, train, you would train your children in the way of the Lord? He so trained his son Isaac, for example, that by the time we, we got to Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1 to 18, Genesis 22, from verse 1 to 18. That boy already knew that you don't come to God empty-handed. You know the story. They were going up to the mountain where God said Abraham was going to uh, sacrifice Isaac. Isaac said to his father, I can see the wood. I can see the fire. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? From your preparation, Papa, I can see we are going to have a meeting with God. I can see everything except 
the thing we're going to use for sacrifice. How many of us come to church with an offering in the hand of our child, telling the child, we are going to the presence of God. We don't go empty-handed. Isaac knew. His father taught him that we don't come to God empty-handed. Occasionally, it is the children that are well taught that we even remind the parents when they are failing in their duties. I remember very well the story of one of my uh, pastors. They've just returned from a journey, a long journey. And as soon as they got home, the father went straight to the fridge, opened the fridge, brought out a bottle of Coke, and was about to begin to drink when the boy said, one of his children said to him, Daddy, we have not prayed yet. We have returned from a journey. We haven't thanked God yet. And you're about to drink Coke. <laughs> the bottle dropped out of the hand of the father. Because that child had been trained. Are you training your children? Are you trained yourself? This boy had been so trained that he must honor his parents. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother that your days might be long. Are you training your children to honor you? Are you honoring your own parents? Because there are many of us Christians. <laughs> when papa or mama dies, the burial ceremony, we want it to be the burial ceremony of the century. And mama died of hunger. Because you have not been taking care. Honor your parents so that you may live long. So that in your old age, there will be people also around to take care of you. Isaac knew. You must honor your parents. You must surrender to your parents. Because you know the rest of the story. When Abraham has prepared the altar and he grabbed Isaac to tie him, I've said it before, if Isaac did not surrender, there's no way a man who is 115 years old will be able to tie down a 15-year-old boy. If Isaac decided to run, Abraham could not catch up with him. But he has been taught total submission to parents. Submission, even on to death. The boy allowed himself to be tied. He surrendered completely. That boy had been taught that surrender to God must be total. The boy surrendered himself. And this lesson is so important because God is about to prosper somebody. <laughs> if he prospers you, will you surrender to him? Some of us, even at the level where we are now, find it difficult to do the will of God. Some of us find it difficult even to pay our tithes. 
Let me assure you, if you can't pay the tithe of a hundred naira, you are not going to be able to pay the tithe of a million. It will be difficult. Oh, God is able to bless abundantly. He's able to load us with blessings. But he knows you. He knows what you will do with abundance. He knows. It all starts from little, little beginnings. When God prospers you, he knows what you will do with the prosperity. And it begins from very little, little things. I've told you the story before of one of my children that I called my one Naira boy. Every Sunday, coming to church, he, she, he will come with one Naira. He will give me one Naira and say, Daddy, this is for you. And then the boy will prophesy, small boy, one day I will buy you a jet. And I will say, Amen. Pat him on the head. I say, my boy, Amen. Years pass. I'm talking of almost 40 years ago. And I didn't see my boy again. You know how boys grew up and then they disappear. But then one day in London, we've just finished a Holy Ghost service. And somebody came to me and said, Daddy, I'm sure you don't remember me. He said, I'm your one, one Naira boy. Ah, how are you? <laughs> I couldn't recognize him now. He has grown. He said, I can't buy you a jet yet. But I have a gift for you. And where is the gift? He says, it's outside. What kind of gift is it that you can't bring in? Come and see. I got out there, and I saw a Mercedes-Benz car. He said, that's all I can buy now. I say, in the name of the Almighty God, you will see by me that jet. And I got some good news not too long ago that my one one naira boy has won an oil well. When I heard the news, I said, Lord, thank you. Here comes my jet. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. Your journey to the top can begin today. This morning can be your own special divine encounter. All these things start small and then begins to grow. This morning, in my home, in my family, when we were discussing uh, open heavens, you know the title for open heavens this morning? I don't know. Many of you don't even use it, but some of you do. Is that you don't fight God. You don't fight your God. And I was telling my children there, some people will be complaining, God, why do you make me a black man and not white? Why am I created in Nigeria and not an American? Why am I black when somebody is uh, yellow? You can't do anything about that. It is already settled. But you can get your way to the top. Because there are certain things that God will always honor. Doesn't matter who you are. If you are a worshiper, God will seek you out. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be 
a house help today, if you are a worshiper, God is going to seek you out because he seeketh for those who will worship him. If you are diligent, hard working, he will reward you. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Doesn't matter whether you are white or black or small or big, if you are diligent, you will one day stand before kings. The third thing is, if you are a sower, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. It doesn't matter whether you sow in Nigeria or you sow in America. It is what you sow that you will reap. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. It doesn't matter whether you are king or messenger. The law of harvest works for everybody. It worked for Abraham. He was willing to sow his only begotten son. He was willing to give all to God. He was willing to give a first fruit sacrifice. And God responded. He prospered him. He prospered his children more. He prospered the grandchildren much more. And the prosperity continued. I am believing God for somebody who is hearing me today. Greatness will start with you. And the greatness will go on and become greater with your children. So when you hear me pray that my children will be greater than I, some people look at me and say, what's wrong with this man? One of my children bought a jet several years ago. It's not a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, but I'm the one who commissioned him into the ministry. So he bought an old jet. Only God knows how old that thing was. But he bought a jet, and I went joyfully to go and dedicate it at the airport. And some newspaper reported it. And somebody said to me, Sir, you don't even have a Mercedes-Benz car. At that time, I didn't have. How can you go and be dedicating the jet of your son? I said, ha, my prayer is that my children will be greater than I. And I pray today again. Every one of you calling me daddy, you will be greater than I. Because that is how your greatness can continue. If your greatness dies with you, that is not the kind of greatness people should desire. Greatness should multiply by the time it gets to children and then to grandchildren and to great-grandchildren. My prayer is that before I die, None of my children will be interested in uh, Papa's uh, legacy, uh, heritage. That God will have prospered them so much that whatever I have will be nothing to them. A friend of mine, very old man, died some years ago. And he, he had a Mercedes Benz. 280, the one they called uh, Obokun. And then when he was 
Jishibuti, when they were reading his will, he willed that tobacco to his firstborn. And the other children began to laugh. Why were they laughing? Because they were wondering, where would the man park this old car? The, the firstborn, he already had five Mercedes-Benz cars of his own. I pray for every one of you here today, in the name that's above every other name, you will be greater than I. But you must learn. You must learn to be hardworking. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he will stand before kings and not before me, men. You must learn to worship him in spirit and in truth, for he will seek you out. David was a worshiper. He was a shepherd boy. He was the son of a concubine. That's why he was not home when the, the man of God came to appoint a king. But God has found a worshiper out there in the bush, and he sent for him and made him a king. You must learn to sow. It is what you sow that you will reap. The more you sow, the more you reap. And you must learn to surrender 100% to God. Because we surrender to Him, He will lift you up. So, today, I've shared with you, I am behaving like Abraham now, teaching my children. It is now up to the children to learn and to apply. But as God lives, who has called me to be your father, if you will learn and apply these things, there's no way, just no way, you can die poor. Because God is no respecter of persons, but is a respecter of principles. So, for your own divine encounter this morning, you have to make up your mind. First, total surrender to the Almighty God. He's made me what I am, but I will apply the principles of worshiping Him, of working hard, and of sowing bountifully. And there are some of us, we haven't even surrendered our life to Jesus Christ. So, so if we begin to talk about uh, surrendering, surrendering our resources, we are joking. If you will come very humbly and lay your entire life at the feet of the cross, he will save your soul. And anybody who comes to Jesus Christ will be saved, whether you are black or white or yellow, tall or fat. Anyone who will come unto me, I will know why cast out. That's what Jesus Christ said. So if you want to come to Jesus Christ now, you want to surrender your life to him, I'm going to count from one to five. Come forward, come and surrender your life to Jesus, and you have a brand new beginning. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three.
fall. Okay, those of you who are still coming, keep coming. Those of you who are already in front, cry to God. Tell him, I'm not joking. I want you to save my soul. I'm surrendering my life to you. Please, Lord, take over my life. Take over completely. And I will serve you 100% for the rest of my life. Cry unto him. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them that the one who had saved our souls will save their own souls also. Let's pray for them for just two minutes, intercede for them. Remember the law of harvest. Even when you are sowing goodness unto the others by praying for them, the Almighty God will give you a harvest of answered prayers yourself. Intercede for them that the Almighty God who saved your soul who saved their own souls also. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to bless your name for your word. And I want to thank you especially for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become genuine children of God today. And I pray that from now on, they will serve you. So that any time they call on you, you will answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I want to promise you, God helping me, from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. So if you turn to your left, you see a man there with a placard, please follow him. He will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect the information I need, and they'll bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go now. <clears throat> Do you know that God respects those who clap for him? <laughs> That's why he said, clap your hands, O ye people. And then shout unto God with the voice of trial. Hmm. Amen. Now this morning you're about to take an offering that will show God that from this moment onward, I will sow bountifully because I want you to prosper me, prosper my children, prosper my grandchildren, prosper us more and more and more. So take your offering now, and then as the uh, band will begin to minister, you dance to the nearest basket and drop your offering. Let's stand on our feet. With our, with our offering and lift up to the almighty God and say, Father, <laughs> loud and clear, Father, I promise you from now on, I will sow bountifully. Let greatness begin with me and continue with my children 
and grandchildren. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God for a moment. I promise you, Lord, from now on, I will sow bountifully. Let greatness begin with me and continually multiply towards my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. And I will sow bountifully from now on. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Okay, band, over to you. You are the mighty God, that great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Mighty God. The great I am. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. He's higher than the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. He's higher than the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's the greatest. He's the greatest. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest, the greatest, my father is the richest, my father is the richest, is rich and the richest, my father is the richest, father is the richest, my father is the richest, is rich and the richest. Now, before I pray, there are, there are some people who wrote asking for special prayers, and they were asked to come to the uh, divine encounter that we will pray for them there. If you are one of such people, you can come to the altar now, so we can pray together. And the rest of us, where we are, you can talk to the Almighty God and ask him for something special you want him to do for you this month. Your prosperity can begin even from today. The Almighty God can give you a divine encounter before you get home. He is the greatest. He is the highest. He is the richest. So those of you who are coming forward, hurry up. And the rest of us, we talk to God. Let's pray for two minutes. Those of you coming forward, tell him what you want him to do for you so I can join my faith with yours. And you can grant your request. And those of us 
on our seats. Let's talk to the Almighty God too. You tell him what you want. Something special that you want God to do for you this month. That you want a special touch from him that would transform your entire life. Let's begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father of all fathers, the owner of everything, the Almighty, the one with whom nothing shall be too hard. Once again, I'm thanking you today, particularly for your children, who are here. Lord, on their behalf, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Whatever they need that will make their joy full, Father, give them today. Whatever miracle they want, Lord God Almighty, before Easter Sunday, <laughs> release unto them. A miracle so big that when people are saying Jesus is alive, they will be able to say, yes, I know. Father, give it to them in Jesus' name. Every one of us, Lord, give us a divine touch today. Let our greatness begin. Let our greatness multiply. Let our greatness continue. In all of our families, my Father and my God, let poverty be forgotten. And give us the grace to serve you, to serve you diligently, to worship you diligently, to sow bountifully. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. Don't forget, this Friday is special for children. Don't leave your children at home. We're going to pray for them. We are going to anoint them. And the Almighty God will make them greater than us in Jesus' name. All right, let me hear somebody shout another hallelujah. <laughs>